Well, good morning, D-Live. Welcome to, what are we calling it? Mornings with the Manchild. Uh, we'll be testing out some different different times this week. Took a little while to get into the uh, groove of things over on Stream Me. More than likely going to take a little while over here as well. Probably a few shorter shows this week. I'm thinking trying like today, you know, we'll do around 8 my time. Uh, tomorrow we'll try 6 in the morning. Or I'm sorry, Wednesday we'll try 6 in the morning. And then Friday, I'm going to try it about 4 in the morning. And then I'll pick the appropriate one. I'll pick the one that seems like the best fit. Because over on Streamy, we got we got, uh, we got got up to some shit, some shenanigans early in the morning. So I'm not sure exactly what time I'm going to stick with, but we'll figure it out this week. Adjust it as need be. How's, how is your week treating you? I hope you had a good 4th of July. I had a fantastic 4th of July. I'm hat rich now. Oh. Gonna buy me that Lambo with all that hat money. It's good times coming for Jimmy Boy. <laughs> buy my hats. I need a mansion. All right, I need a mansion to park that Lambo at. It's fucking important. So get on that. You should jump. You should jump right on that. A lot of a lot of fun things happening. Uh, some interesting things happened over the weekend. We'll talk about that. We'll get into the uh, the normal programming, I guess you could call it, as time goes on, but I want to focus on that Epstein stuff, because holy shit, that is going to be a fucking story that's going to entertain for at least a month or two. No more Acosta, no more golden plea deals for our boy Jeffrey. He's got to stand in front of the feds this time, and he's not going to get a slap on the wrist as he walks away. So let's, we'll, we'll, we'll start with that. We'll start with our, our boy, Mr. Epstein. Jeffrey. Look at him. Look at that smile. The smile of a billionaire that fucks little kids. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. Let me tag that on the end there. I'm not saying he fucks children. I'm saying it's alleged that he does. <laughs> it's alleged that he runs a child a child fucking empire. Not my words, the words of other people. And a conviction, apparently. Mr. Epstein has been arrested again on similar charges to what he was arrested for before. Uh, but this dating from 2002 to 2005, and uh, there's some there's some interesting things that line up with this particular window of time. So we'll we'll start with that. Let me let me pull up the article. I have an article saved of Mr. Epstein. <laughs> Mr. Epstein. Oh God! If you thought that PizzaGate shit was crazy before, wait till you see how it picks up now. Oh. This is like, this is manna from the heavens for Pizzagate people. This is, where is it? I've got, here we go, here we go. Pizzagate is not fake news. Investigate Pizzagate. Take arm weaponry down to the pizza shop. I think that's what they're telling us. Not something I would do, but potentially something they would do. They take their, they take their Italian cuisine very fucking seriously with this group. But Mr. Epstein's been a naughty boy. He's done some terrible things. <laughs> So let's start with that. Let me, let me pull it up. Jeffrey Epstein, arrested for sex trafficking of minors. Uh-oh. Mr. Epstein's being held at the federal lockup in Manhattan, according to law enforcement sources. Does it sound good for Mr. Epstein? They don't like child fuckers in prison, whether it be local or federal. Bill, I love the start of this, by the way. <laughs> Just the opening sentence really sets the mood. Billionaire pedophile. Jeffrey Epstein was arrested for allegedly sex trafficking dozens of minors in New York and Florida between 2002 and 2005. It will appear in court today, this Monday. According to three law enforcement sources, Epstein, who owns a New York City mansion and an island in the Caribbean, was being held at the federal lockup in Manhattan ahead of his court date. Saturday's arrest by the FBI NYPD Crimes Against Children Task Force comes about 12 years after the 66-year-old financier essentially got a slap on the wrist for allegedly molesting dozens of underage girls in Florida. Because as we all know, different laws apply to different people. If you're rich, you can basically do whatever the fuck you want and get away with it. As long as you've got a good enough lawyer, apparently. And when they say a slap on the wrist, they're not kidding. This guy goes to court for molesting children. And they give him 13 months. That was the plea deal he got from Acosta. 13 months. But it's not in jail. It's work release. So for eight hours a day, he shows up at the jail and stays there. And the rest of the day, he's allowed to go free. 
So it's not even really 13 months, is it? It's, 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 uh, well, a th uh, yeah, a third of that. It's a third of that because he's only spending a third of the day there every day. So it's, it's mm, four, four months, four and three, you know, uh, one third months in jail if you add it all up uh, and, and made it go the entire length. Slap on the wrist. Molest a bunch of kids, four and a third months in jail. For more than a decade, Epstein's alleged abuse of minors has been the subject of lawsuits brought by victims, investigations by local and federal authorities, and exposés in the press. I believe there's a Vanity Fair article that started this off with the original arrest. Uh, but despite the attention cast on his alleged sex crimes, the hedge funder has managed to avoid any meaningful jail time, let alone federal charges. The new indictment, which according to two sources will be unsealed Monday in Manhattan federal court, will allegedly... Uh, will allege that Epstein sexually exploited dozens of underage girls in a now familiar scheme, paying them cash for massages, and then molesting them, or sexually abusing them in the Upper East Side Mansion, or his palatial or palatial residence in Palm Beach. Yeah, this was the Lolita Express guy. This was a guy that was uh, alleged to have, uh, you know, basically chauffeured people to go fuck kids. He, he would have this giant fucking plane. People. <laughs> People would fly on the plane, fuck little kids, and then show up at his uh, his little island resort, fuck some more kids, and then fly home. Lots of big name people were, uh, you know, alleged to have been associated with this. A lot of politicians, a lot of people in Hollywood, a lot of financiers, a lot of other people too. We'll get to them in a minute. Uh, where are we here? Okay, uh, he's facing up to a maximum this time around. Uh, not 13 months, not a slap on the wrist. 45 years. The case is being handled by the. This is interesting, too. I didn't notice this the first time around until somebody pointed it out. The Public Corruption Unit of the Southern District of New York, with the assistance of the FBI's Human Trafficking Division. Apparently, the Public Corruption Unit deals with government employees. So why would the government, why, why would the Public Corruption Unit, of all people, being, uh, be the ones that are handling this? Boys, I think it's time to get maybe a little excited. Public Corruption Unit's handling it. They investigate people within the government, and they seem to be in charge or co-charge of this particular case. I don't want to say happenings are happening, but it feels like maybe, maybe some big important people are about to have a real fucking bad week after the announcement comes out today. Oh, oh, Mr. Epstein, you're going to have an unfortunate accident. I, I, I fear Mr. Epstein may commit suicide with two bullets to the back of his head if this is allowed to go to trial, because I don't think there are going to be any plea deals this time. Several of the billionaires, employees, and associates allegedly recruited the girls for Epstein's abuse, and some victims eventually became recruiters themselves, according to law enforcement. The girls were as young as 14, and Epstein knew they were underage, according to the de er, details of the arrest and indictment shared by two officials. Epstein's lawyer, My er, Martin Weinberg, Declined to comment when reached by the Daily Beast on Saturday night. The SDNY also declined to comment. It's been a long time coming. It's been too long coming, said attorney David Boys, who represents Epstein's accuser, Virginia Roberts. Oh, that is not good, boys. I don't know if you're familiar with who Virginia Roberts is. Let me um, let me pull it up. I want to I want to read this to you because this is going to get fucking uh, it's going to get wild. This is going to get wild real quick. All right, I believe it's in the bottom section here. Let me let me find it. it should be not the, not the philanthropy. No, no, no. Where is it? Oh, no, 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 no. Where is it? Uh, let me see if we can find it. Okay, here we go. Oh, you're going to like this. All right. So Virginia Roberts, her lawyer is commenting on this. In January of 2015, a 31-year-old American woman, Virginia Roberts, who was later known as, a, it's her name change, allegedly in a sworn affidavit that at the age of 17 she had, was held as a sex slave by Epstein. She further alleges that he trafficked her to several people, including Prince Andrew and Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz. Roberts also claims that Epstein and others had physically and sexually abused her, Roberts alleged that the FBI may have been involved in a cover-up. She said she served as Epstein's sex slave from 1999 to 2002. The interesting thing, well, there, there's a lot of interesting shit. So her tail end of her sex slavery under Jeff, or under uh, allegedly under Jeffrey Epstein 
ended in 2002. The new charges that are coming forward today range from 2002 to 2005, meaning her allegations are within the window. Now, not only the, the what makes that so fucking wild isn't just the Prince Andrew thing. We're not talking about we're not talking about royalty and people from other governments. It's the Harvard law professor Alan Dershowitz. When Epstein was originally brought to charge and uh, ha, you know went through his whole uh, original ordeal, he had given a bunch of money. Uh, he was the philanthropist, given a bunch of money to different organizations, most of which returned the money. Except for one organization, Harvard. <laughs> Harvard's president declined uh, initially and said, we don't want to return the money. We think we should keep the money. Also, Alan Dershowitz, the person she accused of being sex trafficked, or sex trafficked to, was his lawyer. How weird is that? So you have this woman come forward and say, hey, this guy held me as a sex slave and made me fuck Alan Dershowitz who coincidentally works at Harvard at a, a university he's given a lot of money to, and that same guy who he sex trafficked me to uh, is part of his defense team for his trial that got him 13 months of fucking home arrest or whatever dumb, retarded shit it was. Oh, I have a feeling this is going to be amazing. I think all sorts of wild shit's about to come out. We hope the pros oh, back to the article. We hope the prosecutors will not stop with Mr. Epstein because there were other people who participated with him and made the sex trafficking possible. Again, that's coming from her attorney, from Virginia Roberts' attorney. In an era where Me Too has toppled powerful men, Epstein's name was largely absent from the national conversation until the Miami Herald published a three-part series on how his wealth, power, and influence shielded him from federal prosecution. And then it goes into basically Acosta giving him a slap on his wrist, letting him get away with it. Talks a little bit about Vanity Fair's article initially with him. Oh, rich people doing underhanded, degenerate shit and getting caught. Royalty, politicians from around the world, rich people, financiers. This is, there's no way this guy's going to walk away alive. Are you kidding me? He's, this is a dead man walking. How is Jeffrey Epstein not going to get suicided? I have no idea. Oh, it's going to be bad. It's going to be a bad day for this dude. I, I hope, here's my hope going forward, that federal prosecutors and the corruption unit and whoever the hell else is in charge and the prosecution team offer no plea deals to try to compel him to name names. I think if you told this asshole, we're going to send you to fucking Leavenworth, we're sending you to the hothouse for 45 years. He's probably going to start telling you who the fuck was involved. Now, there have been a lot of names attached to this. Bill Clinton apparently flew on the Lolita Express, uh, what was it, 23 or 24 times. Donald Trump allegedly had a friendship with uh, Mr. Epstein, though he says he ended it after the uh, first trial and barred him from Mar or, uh, Marcielago or whatever the fuck it was. Uh, because he was hitting on underage girls of employees and uh, patrons. But we're talking about uh, the elite, powerful people that have always been rumored to be involved in some heinous, underhanded shit. Hollywood people, government people, money people, and they all know Epstein. They all seem to party with Epstein. They all flew on that fucking plane with Epstein. And I find it hard to believe that if this guy was banging teenagers and young girls all the time, if he was paying them cash for special massages, then we're not going to see a lot of really nervous fucking people over the next couple of months. And if Epstein has a little black book, I mean, he's rich, right? He's a billionaire. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he had hidden cameras set up to record people to blackmail them or to use his protection in the future. Oh, this could be just fucking phenomenal. Could you imagine if there are tapes of Bill Clinton or somebody else <laughs> Steven Spielberg? Oh, that would be the end of a career. They're not going to survive that. That's death. That's They're done. It's over. Yes, chat. Uh, somebody said, making breakfast and watching pedophiles burn this morning. <laughs> Mr. Epstein's going to have a real bad fucking week. Oh, yeah, let me inhale that cancer. The Lolita Express. <laughs> Who calls something that? 
What you, is that? That's the air transport. What did he call the bus when he delivered the children to people on his island? <laughs> was it Jeff? Was it uh, Jeffrey Epstein's kid fucking fun bus? Is that is that the name of it? Hey everybody! Hey Mr. Clinton, come join me at the mansion. Mr. Epstein's kid fucking fun bus is arriving with a bunch of new children. He brought them all over from the local pizza place. It's gonna be wild. Do you do you want pizza or hot dogs, Mr. President? Oh. Disaster. Disaster. What's what's upon a child? Oh. oh yeah, this is gonna be and that comes out today. I don't know exactly when today. I, I do know that the indictment with more names and more accusations, the scale of how many people were involved, uh, the scope of it, all that shit should be getting released today. I keep an eye out on it. <laughs> because listen. All right, people were showing up at pizzerias with fucking assault weapons because, because they thought there were sex slaves in the basement. All right, let's, with Comet Pizzeria. They thought that there was, a, you know, there's a, like, and listen, I, you know, when Pizzagate was going on, there was a lot of weird shit. I mean, yeah, the owner of the restaurant did give an interview where he said, uh, what was it? First he said, we have no basement. And then in another interview, he said, yeah, we keep our supplies in the basement. So there's a lot of, there's some weird shit. I mean, that's a really weird, small, insignificant thing to lie about. So it made people a little, a little sketchy. All the weird shit they'd post online, the supposed connections to powerful people. I get it. It was weird. But still, people showed up with guns at this fucker's pizzeria. Well, here you go, Pizzagate people. Like, this is what you're waiting for. You wanted to expose some giant conspiracy of rich, powerful, influential, affluent people who were involved in something heinous. Uh, and that's Mr. Epstein. Mr. Epstein seems to be at the epicenter of it, connected to all the elite people you could ever hope for. Celebrities, politicians, financiers. This is the guy that knew them all, arranged parties, flew children on jets to essentially, allegedly, according to the allegations that are out there, molest them. And it sounds like he passed them around. It sounds like many other people were involved in facilitating this and helping it happen. So how did they do it? Where did they get the kids? Or did he just walk up to random children in a mall and do it? Was it through an orphanage? I mean, you're talking about multiple steps involved in getting all these children hustled to this guy. So that's going to involve different organizations and companies and just all sorts of things to help funnel those kids towards him. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And, you know, actually, can I find a clip of that? I wonder if that's still up. Of <laughs> the dude that showed up at Comet Pizzeria with a gun. Uh, let me see if we can find a news clip of it. Oh, that's, uh, I, I just want to see the actual clip and not hear there. At a pizza restaurant, a gunman with an assault rifle targeting... A okay, I guess we can, we, can, we can look at the ABC one. Hold on one second, chat. Let me let me pull it up. We'll we'll take a look at a blast from the past, a little bit of Pizzagate history. Let me uh, just get this queued up here. Uh, pull that down. There we go. Uh, you know what? Oh, it's probably not going to work if I do a window capture. I don't really have that set up properly. So we will just do. We'll just do this. All right. Um, uh, there we go. I think that should be good. Okay. Uh, desktop? There we go. All right. This was from <laughs> the guy. When was this? So two years ago. Three years ago at this point. Moment at a pizza restaurant, a gunman with an assault rifle targeting a Washington, D.C. spot that's at the center of a fake news story about Hillary Clinton and a close aide. Our senior justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, is there in Washington and has all the details for us. Good morning, Pierre. Good morning, Robin. Now, can you even call it a fake news story? I mean, okay. Let's say, hypothetically, Jeffrey Epstein goes to trial and names names, and Bill Clinton is involved, right? They, they're they talking about this pizza, the Comet Pizza thing, Pizzagate is being completely fake news. <laughs> if there's a Clinton involved with Jeffrey Epstein's kid fucking, that's going to make all these previous newscasts look funny, because they all denied it up and down, Podesta's not involved, there's no Clintons involved, and here comes Mr. Epstein to, to rewrite that story. This case shows how fake news can lead to a dangerous situation. Edgar Welch, 28, of Salisbury, North Carolina, has been arrested and charged with assault with a dangerous weapon. And police say that Welch told them that he showed up at the D.C. P. 
pizza restaurant to get to the bottom of what appears to be an utterly bogus story about child abuse promoted on the Internet. How scary was the situation? He allegedly pointed the gun in the direction of an employee and fired the weapon inside the restaurant. The origin of this crazy story was a posting on WikiLeaks involving Clinton campaign manager John Podesta discussing a fundraiser with the owner of the restaurant. Somehow that posting morphed into a baseless allegations of crimes involving Podesta and Hillary Clinton, lies becoming dangerous. George? Just incredible. Okay. Lies becoming dangerous. Oh, could you imagine if Epstein names Podesta? <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, what if he is involved? Oh, Epstein. My God, this story could turn into a thousand different things. Oh, 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 you're crazy. There's nothing going on in that pizza joint. <laughs> Flash forward three years. Jeffrey Epstein's like, oh, yeah, no. Podesta and Clinton came over all the time on my child fucking fun bus. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Oh, disastrous. Absolutely disastrous. Shows up with a gun at the pizza joint. That's amazing. <laughs> what was he expecting was going to happen? Is he going to walk back there to the pizza chef, the guy taking orders all day, and be like, where are the kids? All right, sir, I don't know what you're talking Where are the fucking kids? You keep them by the tomato sauce, motherfucker. <laughs> He's got an AK-47 pointed at his fucking head. The dude's working minimum wage. He has no idea what's going on. Oh, this Epstein thing. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely excited for it. I don't think... Listen, rich people do terribly in prison. There's no way this pampered fuck, who probably shits on a golden toilet, is going to be able to hand a lockup in an actual federal facility, even if it's little baby bitch tier mid-security level. There's no way he can handle it. He will roll over so fucking fast on everybody and anybody he can name to try to get his ass out of danger. The only thing he could hope for is that Donald Trump really was involved and that he could try to blackmail a pardon out of him. That's the only thing I can conceivably see happening to save his ass from not naming names. There's no way this ends well for Epstein. It seems like too many organizations specifically tailored to deal with corruption and uh, you know child trafficking are really focused in on him. Now, you could talk about why is this you know happening right now. There could be a whole host of reasons for why Epstein is being charged and targeted right now. Maybe left-leaning people thought, hey, we can't, how can we nail Trump? The, the Russia collusion thing's not working. Well, I heard he was friends with Epstein. Let's see if we can get Epstein to roll over on Trump. Maybe. And then they look at his administration and see that he appointed a cost to the guy that gave him a plea deal and said, fuck it, let's nail him for it. Now that could backfire because, you know, Trump seemingly walked away from Epstein. I don't, I don't think they were really that close to begin with. He sure wasn't flying on his fucking uh, child fucking fun bus 24 times like uh, Mr. Clinton was. But either way, I don't see how this is going to end well. I mean, who, who knows who he could name? It could be fucking anybody. This could be the sort of thing that blows open a whole slew of shit. You're talking Hollywood. You name a few directors, you name a few powerful producers. And suddenly Dan Schneider is running for the hills. <laughs> if they got Steven Spielberg, they're going to get me. He's living in Mexico now, asking kids to walk around barefoot for him. Oh, disaster. Mr. Epstein is about to have just a very bad life. I don't think his money's going to pull him out this time. I think people were pissed off enough the first time around that he got a plea deal that he was able to walk away with a slap on the wrist. And I don't really even think this is one of those things that's politically divisive. I don't think if you're left-wing or right-wing, you look at a guy like this and say, well, we should protect him. I, this is a, a very rich, powerful guy that seemingly, allegedly, molested a lot of children and facilitated other people molesting them. And I, I, don't, really, I don't really see anybody going to bat for him. He's, he's poisonous. This would be political suicide to touch this and try to go to bat for this guy. So, you know, actually, let me check. Let me see if the FBI has actually released. Have they released any information on uh, just the details of this today? Or what time is that even coming out? Well, let's see if it comes out. Um, now, everybody's saying uh, coming out Monday. Of course, that was already known. Oh, here we go. Uh, CNN just put something up. Maybe maybe we, when we have something. Uh, billionaire Jeffrey Epstein is expected to be charged with operating a sex trafficking ring. Oof. 
not just fucking kids, but operating a sex trafficking ring. Okay, uh, it, so it hasn't been unsealed yet. It's still expected to be unsealed today. What was the other name of the sex cult? Chad, maybe you can help me out with this. this uh, you know, maybe this is related to this. Actually, I hadn't even thought of it. Wasn't there another sex slave ring that just got uncovered? Like, within the last year or two. Nixium or something like that? Or Nivix? Naviasim? I can't, I don't know what weird shit it was, but they went around branding people with fucking uh, cattle prods and shit. Where, where they were taking in actual sex slaves. And it was like a fucking cult leader. And he was a, powerful in the financial world. Do you know who I'm talking about? What was the name of that fucking thing? NXVIM. All right, let's see. Has anybody from that fucking case said anything recently that would... VIM. Okay, uh, last... Okay, let's see what we have here. Rumors about Allison Mack includes nervous breakdown. That's one of the celebrities involved with it. Neighbors believe the sex cult is not dead. Yeah, this was a really fucking weird thing. A multi-level marketing company that was a front for a sex cult. Let me see if I can find an article. I want to see if there's anything recent with this that could somehow connect back to Epstein. Maybe he knew some of these people. Maybe they named him, and that's what got this going. Oh, let's see here. Oh, that was the guy's name. Keith Rainier. Convicted in trial exposing sex cults inner working. Okay, let's uh, let's read about this real quick. Because, yeah, this was another very bizarre fucking story. I don't know what it is with all these rich people and their fucking sex cults, but apparently it's a thing. I don't know how to pronounce this goddamn thing. I'm just going to call it Nix. Nix Keith Rainier convicted in trial exposing sex cult inner workings. Mr. Rainier set up a harem of sexual slaves who were branded with his initials. And kept in line by blackmail. Can I... Let me just show you what this fucking guy looks like. <laughs> you, I just want you to see what he looks like. This was a leader of a fucking sex cult. Alright, where is it? Um, There we are. That's him. That's Keith Rainier, 58-year-old co-founder of the multi-level marketing company that branded women and <laughs> kept them in a sex cult. Alright, let's, uh, let's see what it says here. He was a con man who stole money and created a harem of sexual slaves branded with his initials and kept in line with blackmail, prosecutors said. Oh, oh, uh, turn that off. There we go. On Wednesday, jurors in federal district court in Brooklyn sided with the prosecutors. They found Rainier, the leader of the occult-like group near Albany, uh, known as Nixium, guilty of racketeering and sex trafficking, ending a six-week trial. Okay, so his sex cult, which had sex trafficking, ended in June. Interesting. Do you think this is connected, Chad? I mean, is it possible? Do you think Rainier named Epstein and said, yeah, I got my kids from him? Or I uh, maybe he supplied Epstein with children. Is that is that even fucking possible? Could, could this be part of Epstein's Lolita Express empire and we're just about to find out about it? Yeah, what? Okay. Attracted high profile followers, among them Smallville actress Allison Mack and Claire Bronfman, a Harris to Seagram's liquor fortune, who helped finance its activities. <clears throat> so not only did this guy run a sex cult, he got fucking actresses involved in it and got billionaires to fund it. How? How do you do that? How do you convince some random billionaire to fund your sex cult? The jury deliberated less than half a day before finding Mr. Rainier 58 guilty of all seven counts against him. The defendant wearing a maroon sweater, <laughs> of course, with dark brown elbow patches, was impassive. As the verdict was read, he faces up to life in prison when he sentenced September 25th. Oh, let's see. Oh, where is it? I, I want to see if they talk more about the branding. You know what, actually, I, I probably can find a picture of it. Let's take a look at what this looked like. Because, yeah, he was using... <laughs> he branded them like cows. All right, let's see if I can find a picture. Oh, yeah, here we go. This is this is what this dude did to people. He ran a sex fucking cult, sex traffic women, and then he would brand them so people knew they were his fucking, I, I guess, products? There you go, look at this. He'd brand this shit into their skin. Like scarification, just burn it right in. 
And women agreed to this. They went forward with this. Insanity. Absolute insanity. You know, now that I think about it more, just the timing of this is really interesting. So, Rainier's trial ends in June. His sentencing begins in September. In between the conviction and sentencing, all of a sudden Epstein is brought in on new charges related to sex trafficking, just like Rainier was involved in. God damn, I wonder if these are connected. That would make two billionaires involved in sex cult trafficking. And you, the funny thing to me is, and I make fun of Pizzagate people too, all the time, because they believe in some crazy fucking shit. But, you know, what do you think gets them going is all these super affluent people, billionaires, politicians, celebrities that they always allege and say, hey, these people are all involved in this weird, underhanded, satanic sex shit with kids. And then what happens? You've got one guy getting convicted of a sex cult who knows actresses and billionaires, and another guy who's a billionaire who facilitates child fucking for famous people. And these are both hitting right now. <laughs> it's no wonder they believe in this shit. You're never going to control that Pizzagate stuff now. There's too much shit involved. So I'm going off on a bit of a tangent. I'm just excited to see where this leads. God, I know Epstein doesn't have the balls to stick it out in prison. There's no way. There's no way that guy is going to want to serve 45 years in the federal prison system. There's no fucking way on earth. This isn't the 30s or the 20s where if you were some fucking crime king, you could get a special cell and have some nice fucking wine and pasta like a mafia boss. This is you get stuck in a cell with Tyrone and he balls out your ass for the next 20 years until you fucking hang yourself with a rope made out of toothpaste and soap. So I don't think Epstein has the survival instinct to last in prison. There's no goddamn way. Oh, bend over, Mr. Epstein. Tough times are coming. Oh, oh, you were a billionaire, were you? Oh, well, how do you? How does your billionaire asshole like my dick, Mr. Epstein? Are you enjoy, is your billionaire asshole enjoying my cock? Oh, disastrous. Absolutely fucking disastrous for Mr. Epstein. God damn. Whew. Tough time to be him. Exciting. Exciting time to be us. We're not going to prison for this. Luckily, we're just normal people. I don't think there are any billionaire politicians watching this stream. If there are, run for the hills because Mr. Epstein's about to name you. If you're a regular person, this is just your normal work week day. If you're in between classes or whatever the fuck you're doing. Watching these assholes get lit on fire publicly is going to be entertainment for everybody. And we're going to find out how fucked up it is. But especially we're going to find out how this happened. Where was he getting the kids from? Who was supplying the children? Is there a connection to uh, Rainier's sex cult? <laughs> like, is this... Could this Is this like one of those things where it's like one domino, f or one domino falls and others fall? Are we going to find out there are multiple sex cults and trafficking rings operating different geographical locations across the country, all headed up by rich, influential people, and they're all interconnected. And it's like a trading ring between all of them. I mean, if you had said that before, people would be like, oh, that's a conspiracy theory, that's insane. Well, look where we are today. I mean, who knows? In another two months, maybe they name somebody else. <laughs> maybe we're going to have like a fucking uh, a sex trafficking triad. You got the East Coast and the West Coast, they'll be somewhere in the South or the North. Who fucking knows? Crazy shit. Absolutely insane. Uh, streams cutting out, somebody in chat said. I, I mean, it's showing me green right now. It's giving me uh, a decent bit rate. I've got the settings where they wanted me to do it with the key frame interval at like 2. I don't have it set too high. It should be like 720p max, I believe. It should be coming in. Okay, I don't know. Chat, you want to give me... Oh, wait, is there There is a way to do a poll over here, isn't there? Uh, the stream? No, there's not. God damn it, I missed that function from streaming. I don't know. Uh, chat, is a stream working well for you or not? Uh, next time, when I do another stream on Monday, or Wednesday, I will adjust settings if it's being shitty. Uh, people, it hasn't cut out. It's okay at the moment. It's fine. Works for me. 
All right, I'm going to guess then you've got a shitty internet connection to the guy that was saying it was cutting out. Or maybe it's mobile. I know a lot of people say trying to watch DLive on mobile is like pulling fucking teeth. It's impossible. So I, I guess try desktop or, you know, an ethernet connection. All right, it, it seems to be fine. Okay. Yeah, I tried to get the settings adjusted so it's not it's not too shitty. So it, it, it just runs. I mean, it's mostly audio. Well, I mean, let's be honest. We're not watching videos, really, today. We're talking about Mr. Epstein's wild ride through the federal prison system. <laughs> and uh, his his journey to big boy prison. Aside from that, though, I mean, it's not, you know, not a lot of things going on. Okay. Oh, what was the other thing? There was, a, there was one other thing I wanted to talk about today on our, our first initial little live stream test over on DLive in the mornings. Oh, oh yeah, here we go. Afro Future Fest. And this is some interesting shit. So these geniuses decided to put together a music uh, get-together, an event, up in Detroit, because who doesn't want to go to a fucking musical concert in Detroit? Obviously the safest place in the world to go listen to music at midnight with drunk people around you. When I think security in the evening, I think Detroit. So Afro Future Fest decides to put together an event, hosted it on Eventbrite, and decided they were going to charge different prices based on skin color. So if you're black, you pay $10. If you're white, you pay $20. Listed it, you know, just right out, right? Right on the main page. You know, coincidentally, fun little fact, uh, against federal law to do that, <laughs> you, can't, you can't charge different rates based on protected classes like ethnicity or race. And they, uh, they said, well, we don't fucking care. Fuck you. Fuck you, whitey. <laughs> you're going to pay us double. And this, this story only really broke. People only really noticed it because some one of the, I guess, performers' little jag, I don't fucking know, is biracial. And somebody told her, and she's like, oh, I'm not going to go to a concert and play for them if they're going to charge because she has a white mother. <laughs> Who saw that coming? Uh, I'm not going to go to a concert that would charge my mother more than my father. That seems fucking retarded. And pulled out of it. Now Eventbrite is trying to put pressure on them, saying, well, you can't use our service to sell your tickets if you're going to illegally charge people money based on their skin color. And they've kind of got, they've gone quiet. They're not out there anymore, yelling at people and telling them uh, what they have been telling them for the past week or so, that you don't understand your privilege and that you need to pay more money, Whitey. Watching the reaction to this was real fascinating especially in the comment section of any thread that was discussing it uh, on any social media platform, really. Lots of discussion about equity being more important than equality. I haven't really seen this discussion play itself out to this degree until this stupid fucking event. But lots of blue check marks appearing out of nowhere, especially on Twitter, to remind people that there was this thing called slavery, I guess. I don't know. I've never heard of it before. But as they've told me, black people used to pick cotton. And so somehow that translates into charging white people $10 more to listen to shitty music in Detroit at midnight on August 3rd. And when people said, hey, this kind of sounds like racism, they said, no, it's equity. Oh, black people have suffered so much you don't understand. And the only way to make it right is to charge you $10 more at the shitty Detroit Music Festival, you stupid white motherfucker. I, I, you know, I'm trying to imagine the inverse of this. I'm trying to imagine like a country music festival, like headlining, I don't know, fucking Garth Brooks, or I, I, that's about the only name in country music I can really think of. <laughs> I don't know much about country music, but whatever. Fucking Garth Brooks pulls himself out of the grave, digs himself out of his own fucking career coffin, and heads up a country music festival, and then they charge black people $20 and charge whitey 10 There'd be fucking riots in the street. I don't think you could say... I don't know how you'd swing it as an equity argument. Maybe you could. <laughs> you had a bunch of Latinos in the comments, too, saying, what about us? Asians, what about us? What What's our rate? Where do we fall? Are we black? Are we minority? <laughs> Are we paying white rates here? How does that fucking work? Uh, POC tickets, oh, persons of color tickets, of course, were sold out. So you had to buy, you had to buy the whitey tickets. Now, I've noticed that after Eventbrite 
warned them and said, hey, what you're doing is illegal and we're going to pull your fucking event off our hub and not sell your tickets. Then all of a sudden, all these split price tickets disappeared. They didn't get pulled down. They were sold out. So it seems like that's their way of trying to get around this. They're not even going to address it. They're just going to be like, well, the, the black and white tickets sold out. Now you can just buy a general admissions ticket for $20 and we'll leave it at that. Oh, Peeny Weenie. Hey, it's me, Gator. Hi, Gator. <laughs> Did you bring your soundboard with you? Oh, yeah, I know. The Afro, the, the Afro Future Fest really isn't that big of a story. It's just stupid. It's fucking stupid that there'd be a Detroit music festival that thought they could be so up their own ass they could get away with that. It's Detroit. Is there anything going on in that city aside from rape and murder? <laughs> you know, like, what's... Its neighborhoods are desolate. <clears throat> it makes Gary, Indiana look like a thriving fucking metropolis. I don't think you could really push people away like that, Detroit. I don't think you really thought it through very well. It's not even hot outside, apparently Chad is telling me. That's uh, very true. It's not even hot outside. <laughs> I, love, I love that sound clip. I don't, it's something about the way he says it. It's just really, it's amusing to me. I don't know, it's the tone of his voice or the way he, like, he staccatos it, he, like stutters it. It's just, I don't know how to explain it. It just makes me chuckle. Uh, Jim, you're forgetting that JF was paid by Epstein for a startup. Wait, was what? JF was paid by Jeffrey Epstein? How? How would Jeffrey Epstein even know who JF Gierpe is? <laughs> is there any evidence of that? Please tell me that JF didn't brag about Jeffrey Epstein paying him money. Now that Jeffrey Epstein is at the trial of a child, in the middle of a child trafficking case. People are saying that's true? Fuck off. <laughs> he admitted it? JF got a grant from a pedophile billionaire? <laughs> $20,000! Are you sure he wasn't joking around, chat? That sounds like something... That sounds like a joke. That <laughs> sounds like something he would joke about. JF said it was moral to take the money. He made an episode about it? Did he really? Let me see if I can find this. <laughs> How do you get money from Jeffrey Epstein? Uh, okay, let me see if I can find it. If anybody has it, <laughs> I don't even know what I'm looking for. Well, this is Right Wing Watch. I don't know if that's necessarily the most accurate source for a story on this. It says, white nationalist YouTuber says Jeffrey Epstein once gave him $25,000. <laughs> I don't know if I want to use their take on this. Uh, this is from 2018. All right, let's see what it says. Looks like there's a link to a tweet. Let's see if we could just find the actual... Uh, no, that account's suspended, so I can't even say what that is. All right, this is a quote. Now, again, this is Right Wing Watch, so I, I, I don't know if you want to take it for truth or not, but this is what they say in the article. Jeff Epstein, who we're talking about here, was an original funder of my YouTube channel, Gierpe said. Now it's not that I give a shit about this guy. Okay, he got arrested after. And the fact that he donated to my channel at the very beginning of my YouTube career does not influence me. I'm not trying to find Jeffrey Epstein innocent in what he's been accused of. Uh, Gearpy continues, I may never have talked about it, but Jeffrey Epstein has given me, has given $25,000 to my foundation in the U.S. when I started my YouTube career. As a Jewish millionaire, I think he didn't expect my channel to turn out the way it did. Now, those are allegedly direct quotes. I don't, I've never heard of this. <laughs> He's saying Jeffrey Epstein paid him $25,000 to start his YouTube channel. Fucking what? What foundation? <laughs> what history am I missing here? Hey, listen, guys. Just full disclosure. You know that billionaire pedophile that's in the news right now for sex trafficking and sex cults? Yeah, he wrote me a check for $25,000, patted me on the shoulder and said, I got a good feeling about you. 
I got a good feeling about where this channel's going. Here's $25,000, kid. You get out there and you red pill those kids about race. Holy shit. What what foundation is he talking about? I I wish there was more to this. What uh, Okay, is this like some is this an educational thing? Is he talking about something different? What are we talking about? Uh Andy has it on his channel in the series on JF. I don't want to watch his fucking series on it. Okay. All right, we okay, somebody sent me a video clip. The twisted mind of JF Gear. I'm not watching that. I, I see people are linking me to the to the Andy Worski video, which is 40 minutes long. Okay, we got a time code. All right, let me take a look at the time code. What's Richard take on your Epstein donation? Uh, did you watch my yesterday show? Richard? I didn't, I'm sorry. Okay, because I announced that uh, I, 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 just for uh, transparency, because I was talking about the news item about Jeff Epstein, and I announced that oh, yes, God. Jeff Epstein has once contributed to the start of my YouTube channel with a $25,000 check. Holy shit! <laughs> Richard Spencer's face! His eyes grew like two times their normal size when <laughs> Jeff said that! <laughs> Spencer got this look on his face like he, he felt like he fell off a tree or something and hit his head. He, okay, let me let me show you this look. Hey, hey, Richard, I just wanted to tell you that pedophile Jewish billionaire gave me some money. <laughs> all right, uh, all right, where is it here? Let me let me uh, let me see if I can just show you what his face looked like. It's amusing to me, so let me let me show you talking about the news item about Jeff Epstein and I announced that oh, yes God. Jeff Epstein has once contributed to the start of my YouTube channel with a $25,000 check and do you see that it's like he's processing it it's just slowly hitting him he's like wait a minute what <laughs> what miss what did you say holy shit I, I want to listen I'll listen to the rest of it I, I we don't need to see the video I don't think We'll, we'll hear what what he has to say. I, this sounds like a bizarre story, so I'm curious how JF met Jeffrey Epstein, I guess. That since then, my YouTube channel has kind of taken a different direction, and people were scandalized. They were like, JF is an agent of a Jewish millionaire rapist. <laughs> and as it, I He's that person... You were joking, I presume. No, no, I'm not joking. This is real. Uh, Jeff Epstein... Oh, his look again. All right, you know what? Yeah, the looks are great. I, I'm still torn on this. I think JF might be fucking around. <laughs> I don't know. But we'll we'll take a look at Richard's reaction. You're joking, right? No, I'm serious. <laughs> he gives him this look like, dude. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll pull it up. We'll do full screen, chat. Uh, let's let's take a look. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, move it a little more. There we are. The $25,000 check. And that since then, my YouTube channel has kind of taken a different direction. And people were scandalized. They were like, JF is an agent of a Jewish millionaire rapist. <laughs> and as it, I He's that person. You were joking, I presume. No, no, I'm not joking. Th this is real. Uh... <laughs> that fucking look is great. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Richard, welcome to the show. Uh, Jeff Epstein was a founder to uh, one of my nonprofits in the U.S. with a twenty-five thousand dollar check uh, in two thousand fifteen, I believe. Wow! Um, <laughs> this is the Jeffrey Epstein who has like a pedophile island or something, and yeah, is yeah, it yeah. Clinton. Well, at backer? the time, he was not. He had not been found guilty, I believe, of. The you see that head shake? <laughs> Richard's having a real hard time computing this. Let's back that up just a little bit. 15, I believe. Wow. Um, <laughs> this is the Jeffrey Epstein who has like a pedophile island or something. And yeah, is yeah, it yeah. Clinton? Well, at backer? the time, he was not, he had not been found guilty, I believe, of this yet. But there were, there were <laughs> allegations coming out in the media. But I didn't care. I mean, to me, if you hate pedof pedophiles, 
you should want to take the money out of their bank account and put it in other people's bank accounts. So from a moral perspective, I was totally fine with that. Oh, I, I get no... that argument, but but if but the the implication of someone donating money is that you know the uh, the you you pay the piper, you get to call the tune, and so uh, but. It, well, not this always. was a conditionless donation because it was an educational mm -hmm. show that I had on Neuro TV. And so to me, to me hmm. it was no problem. And I've talked to the media back then. Okay, it was an educational show. So I'm, I'm guessing the foundation he's talking about was related to something else. It's just weird that the quote they pulled said that it was for the, uh, the start of his YouTube channel. But it sounds like it was for something separate. I mean, in the article that they did on Epstein, they talked about how he was a known philanthropist, quote-unquote, and would donate to a lot of people. Like, he was sending out money to a shitload of organizations. So, I mean, I guess conceivably, <laughs> JFs was one of them. That is fucking weird. I Maybe I've heard this before? I don't remember hearing about this. Chat, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I've never... I guess uh, JF's the first person I know that got money from a pedophile billionaire. <laughs> billionaire. It's uh, check that off the bucket list. I I don't know I don't know how to describe it aside from that. Holy shit! It's moral to take the money. Oh, it's unsealed. People are saying it's been unsealed. Let's go take a look. Let's go take a look at Mr. Epstein's wild ride. All right, just updated. Let's see if uh, where is it here. Uh, okay, do you know where it's on... Ah, oh, Jesus, it's going to be one of those, isn't it? All right, let's see if we can find it. Uh, shit, shit, shit. Uh, if anybody in chat has, a, like, a link. Okay, documents, here we go. Jeffrey Epstein charged with two counts of trafficking... All right, this is live. Okay, so from nine... F okay, so this is just uh, just recently. A new indictment against Jeffrey Epstein, the, wife, or the wealthy financier and erstwhile friend of luminaries including Bill Clinton, Donald Trump, Prince Andrew, and others, has just been unsealed in New York. Okay, let's see what it says. Epstein faces two counts of uh, sex trafficking uh, and sex trafficking conspiracy for alleged encounters between 2002 and 2005. Epstein is being prosecuted in the Southern District of New York. He avoided a prison sentence on similar charges. Don't care about that. Let's see. Uh, White House has not commented. Where is the actual... Uh, okay, if this person's covering it, maybe they've got more details. Uh, waiting in clerk's office for the indictment to get unsealed in a tense as last scene of The Sopranos. Okay. All right, but they're not... They haven't updated anything for 35 minutes. It just says two counts, but it's not going into any details aside from that. Okay. Uh, hold on, chat. Let me, let me find it. Oh uh, yeah, people keep linking me to the Guardian. I mean that's that's fine, but the newest update that I'm seeing, unless there, oh maybe there are more. Ah uh, no. Okay. Well, here here's some of the talking heads talking about it. It's unusual and notable that the SDNY's public corruption unit is on the Epstein case. I keep thinking back to 2008 when I was in the SDNY, and public corruption was on a seemingly routine interstate prostitution case. Turned out, then New York governor. Elliot Spitzer was client number nine. And then from somebody else, I've known Jeff for 15 years. Terrific guy. Oh, that's a quote from Donald Trump from 2002. They're going to throw that one at him every day. Okay, well, yeah, where the fuck is the exact details, though? Oh, they're taking their goddamn time with this. Let me see if I can find the newest news result. Uh, let's see. By date. Okay, here's one four minutes ago. Okay, th this looks like it was just updated. Let's see if we got new information here. Again, two charges of sex trafficking. Oh, uh, let's see. And conspiracy to commit sex trafficking, he's expected. Uh, and he expected more superseding indictments would be added. Uh, Boy said both the public corruption unit and the sex trafficking unit in New York are working on the investigation. Uh, this is an important first step. Hopefully prosecutors will focus on some of uh, his co-conspirators going forward. Who is this coming from? Who's who's saying this? 
Okay, that's just one of the talking heads. Uh, one, in law, one law enforcement official told the Associated Press the case deals with allegations that Epstein paid underage girls for massages and molested them at his homes in Florida and New York. Epstein, who was once counted. Okay, we've got that. Still waiting for more details. All right, so as it stands, at least from the information that's out there, he's got sex trafficking and conspiracy to commit sex trafficking charges hanging over his head. Uh, somebody in one of the earlier articles had said up to 45 years in prison for these particular particular ones. But uh, here's what I'm confused about. If it's saying that the two charges against him right now are just for sex trafficking, but it's also alleging in the stories that are they're covering that um, he molested children, shouldn't he be charged with that as well? Like, why is it just these two charges? That, I guess that's what I'm confused about. There should be more. Okay. Indictment. Jeffrey Epstein worked and conspired with others, including employees and associates. <laughs> They're going to go for it, aren't they? This isn't going to just be Jeffrey Epstein. They're legit going to go for it. They want to take other people down. That's why the corruption units involved. This reaches into government. Somebody somewhere during this investigation found out powerful people <clears throat> facilitated and were associated with the sex trafficking of children and the molestation of children. And they're going to use Epstein as a wedge, as leverage to go after them. This is going to get fucking interesting. This is going to get real fucking interesting. A whole lot of gym accidents coming in? While there might be barbells falling from the sky, I'll be honest with you, chat. I, I don't see this guy surviving long. I Listen, what do you think is going to happen to this putz? Do you think he's really going to... His only chance at getting out of this without 40 years in prison or a barbell falling on his head is to start talking now. He has to know that. He has to know that. There's no way he doesn't know that. The question is, is he stupid enough to try to ride it out, or is he going to roll over and give them what they want? How long is he going to play cat and mouse with federal prosecutors? I don't know. This is going to be a wild ride, though. <laughs> God, I wonder if, if uh, Gearpy got a $25,000 donation... How many hats has Mr. Epstein bought? Mr. Epstein, how many of my hats did you buy? <laughs> if you bought any, please burn them. Jesus. His private jet will crash? That's a potential. There's always a potential for an accidental air crash to happen for poor Mr. Epstein. Uh, what did that say? Uh, give who what they want, though? Uh, well, Domina... Uh, this is what I think is happening. I think investigators <clears throat> were clued to this case. I think they looked into it and they saw that there were probably some interesting names attached to it. And I think they see that Epstein is at the center of it. And I think that federal prosecutors and the government, or at least as part of the government, uh, will go leniently on him. Uh, not this, t you know, not like the last time where it was a slap on the wrist just because he was wealthy and connected. I think they'll go leniently on him this time. If he gives them names of corrupt officials, uh, people within the financial sector, people within Hollywood, I, it's just, it's the fact that corruption units involved that I find so interesting. I mean, maybe it's something on a smaller scale, sure. Maybe maybe some local police chief that was involved in the first investigation uh, fucked some kid. I don't know. Maybe Epstein was the one that supplied that kid, and that's why the corruption unit's involved. But it, it's just... There's something, there's more to this. Now that they're saying associates and employees were involved. That means that more people, the more people that are involved outside of just Epstein means more people having a potential to talk. More people having a potential not just to talk about Epstein himself, but about people that he associates with. I, again, Virginia Roberts named Prince fucking Andrew as one of the people that she alleges was involved in this. And how many pictures have we all seen of Jeffrey Epstein posing with famous politicians or famous uh, uh, wealthy entrepreneurs or uh, celebrities? 
I, there's no telling who's fucking connected to this. I mean, goddamn, Allison Mack, a Smallville actress, was involved with the Nixium uh, sex cult, with Rainier's sex cult. You would never, what, like, it's a weird thought. Why would an actress be involved in some Canadian con artist sex cult? But she was. So who fucking knows who Epstein has involved with this shit? Uh, somebody in chat, Ted, saying the Clintons will never let him speak, or if he does, they won't let him get uh, won't let it get out. He'll be killed, and this will be buried. Well, it's uh, oh, somebody's one is. What do we got here? We got some more breaking information. Let's see what we got. Uh, here we are. Thank you. Somebody in chat, link me. Uh, detail: Federal prosecutors want to seize Epstein's New York mansion. Uh oh. For <laughs> oh, here we go. They're going to take everything from this motherfucker. Oh, JF, you better go delete the fact he donated money to you. They're, they're going to come and try to get that 25 k from you. Forfeiture allegations. As a result of committing the offense alleged in count two of this indictment, Jeffrey Epstein, the defendant, shall forfeit to the United States, pursuant to Title 18, any property, real and personal, that was used or intended to be used to commit or to facilitate the commission of an offense alleged in count two. The lot or parcel of land, together with its buildings, apertures, improvements, fixtures, attachments, and estimates, or easements, located at 9th East 71st Street, New York, New York, with block number 1386 and lot number 10, owned by me. They're going to take his house. <laughs> they're going to take his mansions in Florida and New York, and they're going to take his fucking plane, too. <laughs> oh, Jeff. Oh, it's a bad day to be you, buddy. Over the course of many years, the defendant Jeffrey Epstein sexually exploited and abused dozens of minor girls in his homes in Manhattan, New York, and Palm Beach, Florida, among other locations. If they seize every property related to the uh, to the committing of these offenses, and they're saying it's not just New York and Florida, but other locations, <laughs> they're going to take they're going to take his mansions, they're going to take his plane, and they're going to take his fucking island too. Oh, that's a way to get a motherfucker to talk. Listen, Jeff, we're taking everything you own, all right? You may win this case. <laughs> you may come out with a plea deal, but we're going to take all your shit. Now, if you were to name somebody, on the other hand, maybe we'll let you keep a house in New York. Maybe we'll let you keep your house in Florida, Jeff. Somebody's saying they can seize his properties and use the money from the sale of it to build the wall. <laughs> Jeff, we sold your island to build a couple miles of wall along the Mexican border. Thank you for your service. Holy shit. Yeah, I, people are linking the full indictment now. I'm just watching as the, uh, the coverage of this comes out in real time. Oh, Jeffrey, it is not a good day for you. 14-page indictment. Uh, yeah, alleging multiple girls were victimized, alleging that he was involved in the uh, running of a sex ring, facilitating basically child prostitution. They want to take his fucking property. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, he's going to be so mad. I don't even... What's the valuation? Does anybody know how much Epstein's mansions are worth? How much is that private island worth? I mean, he's a billionaire, but... What, what is that billionaire status based on? Is it all his holdings? Is his land counted as that? <laughs> like, this dude, this dude just went from a billionaire to a millionaire, right? Like, the, he's lost a level of prestige because they're taking all his shit. They're going to take your plane, Jeff. They're going to take your child fucking fun bus plane right away from you. No more sex island for you, Jeffrey. Your mansions are coming to the government, Jeff. <laughs> You're going to have to molest kids out of a Motel 6 when we're done with you, Jeffrey. <laughs> we're taking all your shit. Oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm reading more details, chat. I'm sorry. Consequences will never be the same, yeah. Jeffrey is uh, about to have bad, bad time. Yeah, that's uh, the person reporting about the forfeiture, at least the one that was linked, was Adam Klasfeld. 
which I guess is a uh, courthouse news verified. So I mean, I'll take his word that he's not just pulling it out of his ass. Isn't that neat? Sure is. Yeah, it sure is neat. Poor Jeffrey. He used to own a private island, but he had to diddle kids. <laughs> now he's living. Now he's living in a a fucking uh, super uh, super eight motel. Oh, poor poor little Jeffrey. He used to be a billionaire. He used to be so rich, Jeffrey. And they took all your shit. Uh, people saying Trump's anti-trafficking order. He's going to have a colon accident in jail? Oh, I, I guarantee you he's going to have a few accidents. Oh, I bet he's screaming right now. Put yourself... Let me, let me put his fucking picture... It is up. Good. Jeffrey Epstein. Look at that face. This dude is screaming his fucking head off right now. I bet he's throwing shit at his lawyers. I bet he's kicking over furniture. How could they do this to me? I'm Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> oh, I, I wonder if they're doing this to bait him, right? Let's make him as fucking angry as we can. We'll tell him we're going to take all his shit. Because now Jeff is going to sit down with his lawyers and he'll be like, I don't want them taking all my shit. Let's pull out the blackmail tapes. Let's pull out the tapes of all the famous, powerful people that I watched fuck children. And we'll hand them over in exchange for my private kitty fucking island. Oh, <laughs> Jeffrey. Dark days ahead for you, my friend. Ah, oh, what a morning. What a great day. You know, I mean, this guy got away with it last time. That bullshit 13-month sentence where he only had to show up for eight hours a day to jail for the crimes that he was charged with, that was crap. Acosta's an idiot. And the fact that he got a deal like that was ridiculous. I don't think they're playing around this time. <laughs> I don't think these people are fucking around this time. This isn't going to be a slap on the wrist, hey, you're rich, you're powerful, you're elite, you're one of us, we're going to let you get away with it. I think they want to make him an example. And I think they want him to name some fucking names. And they're going to apply as much pressure as they can to get that to happen. All about that money? I don't even know what you'd value a private island at. <laughs> but I'm sure they'll find a way to put a sticker on it. Oh, do you think Alan Dershowitz is going to represent him again? That's the lawyer, the Harvard professor that uh, Virginia Roberts alleged was part of this, who represented him the last time he went to trial. Is it possible she'll go to trial with him, or he'll go to trial with him again? Maybe. Oh, I bet you, I bet you Jeffrey right now is calling in every favor he's got. He's calling up every motherfucker he ever did something dirty with, and is like, listen, you better give me favorable coverage on this, or you're going down with me, buddy. Uh, what is it saying? Uh, somebody chat, all the influencers? Who the fuck are the influencers? Are saying, let the chips fall where they fall, Dems or Republicans. I, I have no sympathy for Jeffrey Epstein, nor with the people that associate with him. Uh, <laughs> if you're involved in this, uh, your time is up. Oh, God, I, you know, it's one of those things, too. Going forward, here, here's what I'd say to chat. If you, wanna, if you want a good laugh to find out who's really scared about this, <clears throat> for the next two weeks, just pay attention to the really rich, influential people in Hollywood, politics, and in finance. And just see which ones of them decide to go on an extended vacation out of the U.S. I'm going to call it right now that in the next two weeks, there are going to be a lot of people that suddenly decide they want to go take a trip to a country that doesn't have an extradition treaty with the United States government. <laughs> a lot of motherfuckers are going to be enjoying the beautiful coast of, I don't know, Africa? I don't know what countries don't have extradition treaties with the U.S., but I imagine they're going to be going there for a while. <laughs> Somebody said Tarantino. Yeah, other people were saying Spielberg. Who knows? Who knows where they're going to go? Ah, uh, yes, the beautiful country of Zimbabwe. Who doesn't want to live in the luscious land of Zimbabwe with no food? <laughs> it sounds like paradise. Uh, Ukraine, uh, listen, you know, those Eastern Europeans, they may have their political issues uh, going on right now, but I'm fairly certain they don't want a bunch of expats that are pedophiles hanging out in their country. 
especially like the Ukrainians and the Russians. Like, that's the last place you want to go if that's a crime you committed. They'll beat you to death with a brick. <laughs> you don't want to go to those countries. They're not going to tolerate your shit. Oh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, pay attention. Pay attention to famous, powerful people and see who runs. They're not going to say they're running. They're just going to say, oh, I'm going to go on a vacation. Or it'll be some, like, Hollywood report story. Oh, famous director decides to go on a five-month African vacation. Or, you know, famous banker decides to go to uh, Hong Kong for the next three years. Or politician resigns to spend time with family, decides to move to South America. Just look for those stories over the next couple of weeks. Because I'm going to guarantee that most of those are going to be related to this. Uh, someone in chat, all of Hollywood relocates to Thailand. <laughs> That's going to be a boom for Thailand, I guess. Oh, chat. Yeah, let me, I'm going to post a little dancing pudding. There we go. A little dancing pudding to celebrate celebrate their world collapsing on them. <laughs> Bill Clinton has a mysterious heart attack. It's a potential. It's a Thaiwood. Is that what they're going to call it? Thaiwood? Potentially. That'll be the new name of the location. Oh, hey, what do you know? Half of Hollywood relocated to Thailand to uh, film a new movie for the next three years. Uh, who saw that coming? Oh, it's got 14 different directors and 82 producers. Well, that's weird, but okay. Oh, we'll, we will definitely chat. We will definitely follow up with this on Wednesday. Uh, now, like I said, this week I'm just testing out different times. I, I think going forward I'm going to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I just don't know exactly what start time in the morning. So maybe, maybe it's 8 o'clock like today was. Maybe it'll be 6 o'clock like Wednesday or 4 o'clock like Friday. I don't know 100%. But uh, the next little morning stream will be on Wednesday. It'll be 6 p.m. my time, so 7 p. or I'm sorry, 6 a.m. my time, so 7 a.m. Eastern, uh, Wednesday morning. And it, as far as, like, I don't have a lot of features on this fucking account. Uh, like, replays and shit, they, they tell me they keep them for seven days and then they delete them. I don't know if there's a way for me to make them keep them longer. I'll look into it. Uh, but I guess if you miss a stream, you've got seven days to watch it before DLive takes it down. Uh, that's what their little pop-up tells me every time I, I, I go to look at replays and shit. Um, I, yeah, I think that covers it for today. I mostly was just really fascinated by the fact that Jeffrey Epstein is going to... His comeuppance are coming. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein's going to lose all his property. Jeffrey Epstein's going to be living in the gutter or in a federal prison facility for the next 40 years. And a lot of famous, powerful people are probably really fucking upset right now. And that's fantastic. I, I hope they all get what's coming to them. And I hope it's a big, glorious public shit show that we can watch unfold. And I'm going to laugh if that Nixium cult and that sex trafficking case is somehow related to this. Because that Nixium shit involves celebrities too. And if Epstein involves... It could be... It could be a grand case. Who knows what, where it's going to go. What twists and turns it's going to take. We'll find out. I'll follow up with this on Wednesday. Uh, on Wednesday, I, I've got some fun shit planned. Uh, so we'll we'll watch some stuff. Uh, kind of on the tier of that IGN dating show. So have a good laugh in the morning. I know this is a bit heavier than the normal morning shit that I would do over on Streamy. But it, it's just watching Epstein get what's coming to him is... How could you not want to talk about it? How, how could I avoid talking about Mr. Epstein's wild ride that he's looking forward to? Uh, have a good morning, chat. I will see you on Wednesday. What song am I going to play out with? I don't even know. I haven't really even thought about this. Let me find something. Something that you'll all equally hate. Oh, can I find some hardcore rap music? I know you guys love that shit. Uh, let's see, let's see, what can we do? What can we do to take us out? Oh, one moment, chat. Holy unprepared for this. Uh, can I find some more weep shit? Oh, maybe some more weep shit. Uh, 
no, no. Let's let's find something good. Uh, where are we here? Oh, is this that? <laughs> this might have been the song I used for Monday Matt's uh, uh for that Monday Matt suicide clip. Let me see if this is uh. There we go. All right, chat. Have a good week. Have a good morning. I will see you Wednesday, 6 a.m. my time, 7 a.m. Eastern.